Thank you, Tony, and thank you all for attending our webinar. Uh, my name is Brian Strini, and I am going to discuss uh, pleating and folding. So we're going to take a high-level look at the application, the machine types, and the pleat head designs. So from an application side of things, the pleat and fold process creates equal sections or pleats of a balloon. So you take an inflated balloon, place it into the pleat head, the pleat head then closes and creates those, those pleats. Uh, typically, we're looking at between two to eight pleats, and that is really dictated by the inflated balloon's diameter. Those pleats are then folded around the catheter shaft utilizing the fold head, and you can also apply thermal energy throughout the process from the pleat or fold head, which can help to create the pleats and also influence rewrap characteristics. So what are we trying to gain out of this process? Well, we need it to be accurate and repeatable. We do not want any backfolding or unwanted creases in the pleats that could lead to uh, a larger OD or a non-uniform expansion of the balloon. So again, those even pleats are gonna provide us with that uniform expansion if it's just a straight angioplasty procedure, or if there's a stent placed on top of that balloon, it is gonna allow that stent to be deployed uniformly. And the outcome that we want from the process, again, um, accurate and repeatable, but with that key characteristic being that folded OD. So we want that outside diameter of that folded balloon to be the same unit after unit with that smallest possible crossing profile. And then on top of that, if you're crimping a stent, you know that folded balloon OD is going to dictate your overall stent crimped uh, OD. So machine selection, we have two basic types of machines, a pneumatic and servo. The pneumatic systems are gonna utilize uh, cylinders and air pressure to open and close the heads and mechanical hard stops to control diameter. The pressure can be adjusted by the user to apply various amounts of force on the pleat or fold side. And the uh, hard stops can also be adjusted to create different uh, closed diameters for the fold head or open diameters for the pleat head. On a servo controlled system, we're utilizing servo motors that will create that motion on the pleat and fold heads and encoders for diameter control. Uh, also, there's typically a load cell integrated into the activation system, which allows us to monitor force uh, that the heads are applying throughout the process. Within that servo family, we also offer an eye system. And what the eye system allows you to do is to utilize the pleat and fold head simultaneously throughout the process so that you're utilizing or using both heads at the same time rather than a traditional approach of pleating and then folding. So what that affords the, the operator is, is an increased throughput because you're not uh, waiting on one head to finish to start the next process. The other two types of uh, machines can be uh, configured as a tabletop or a workstation, um, either of which um, can carry different types of pleat heads. But the key difference um, with the workstation is it allows you to have multiple heads on a single platform that are already calibrated and already up to 10. So if you're varying your balloon sizes throughout a day or a production run, uh, the machine is ready to go as simple as uh, scanning a barcode or calling up uh, the recipe. The machine then knows which head to utilize. Conversely, if you're doing a tabletop machine that has a single pleat or fold head and you need to switch sizes throughout the day, you're going to install a different pleat head, calibrate it, and then warm it up to whatever operating temperature that you have selected. We also offer film systems. And these, uh, these machines utilize an integrated layer of film that's laced through the head and it's protecting the balloon surface from the steel elements either in the pleat or fold side. And so this allows you to protect that, that polymer, that drug from being damaged in the pleat fold process or potentially uh, cross contaminating throughout the day if uh, some of that coating would come off on an element and then be transferred to a subsequent balloon. So pleat head design. So there's some main design parameters that we look at uh, whenever we're designing a pleat head. Uh, the main ones here are the pleat direction, the number of pleats, the balloon length, the min or max inflated balloon diameters, the closed diameter of the head, and then the wing gaps. And all of these design parameters that go into the elements, um, we look at the largest uh, of, the, of the matrix to make sure that we're not damaging the balloon. 
if the wing gap or closed diameter is too small, uh, you could pinch the balloon and, and um, create some uh, pinholes or damage in that in that balloon. So we're always looking at the, the largest parameters to design to to ensure that we have um, no, no issues with uh, pinching or, or adverse uh, effects throughout that process. And all these parameters are developed from uh, the MSI balloon information sheet which would be provided uh, early on in the, in the assessment process to, uh, to the customer to fill out. So this is an example of the BIS uh, and the different um, categories or, or parameters that we look to collect. And it can go you know, um, upwards of you know, four or more balloons depending on what um, the, the user needs to deplete to and fold within their matrix. So this is typically detailed early in the process. It allows our engineering team to take a look at it and understand what number of pleats would be uh, best suited for this application, lengths of heads, diameters, and some of those general um, parameters that really feed the, the design process. So we're gonna dive into each one of these uh, a little bit further. So first we're looking at uh, the pleat direction. So we typically look at it from the proximal end of the balloon and the direction that those pleats are then formed, either counterclockwise or clockwise. And that's a user defined parameter. As we look at a number of pleats, we offer between two and eight pleats, and that is more um, uh, on our engineering team's discretion to recommend a certain amount of pleats based on the overall balloon characteristics or parameters. Um, two pleats, typically, you know, a two millimeter, three millimeter balloon, we might do a two pleat. When you get up into some of the larger diameters, 20 plus millimeters, you know, we're going to look to use a, utilize an eight pleat. And then head diameter and head length. Uh, we offer various lengths of heads from 60 to 350 millimeters in various increments and open diameters between 2 and 40 millimeters. We can go larger than 40 millimeters if needed, but um, that, uh, that range of 2 to 40 is where we see most of, uh, of the applications uh, landing. Inflated balloon diameter range. So uh, as a general rule of thumb, uh, one pleat head may uh, be able to uh, process a range of about two to one. So for example, um, two to four millimeters, six to 12. And what we're looking at there is uh, that, that holds true if the marker band and distal seal diameters are the same or similar. And what we're looking at in that, in that area is if your largest distal seal is, let's say 40 thou, and your smallest is 20 thou, and you're trying to run that in one single pleat head, that smaller diameter distal seal won't necessarily center every time directly in the center of that 40 mil, 40 thou uh, opening, uh, closed diameter opening. So we want to make sure that the, the delta between the smallest and largest diameters, uh, either distal seal or marker band, are close enough that we are confident that the balloons on the smaller end of that range are going to center correctly and not uh, create a shorter or longer pleat, um, which could lead to a, a non-uniform uh, fold and deployment. We also have to make sure that the head opens wide enough to accommodate the largest pressurized balloon in that range. And then these final two element uh, pieces, the element wing gap and pleat radius, uh, those are, are intertwined. And what we're looking at there is the element wing gap, the length of it has to accommodate the balloon material at the largest diameter. So if you look at the, the top two images there, you can see how the two millimeter balloon uh, extends about a third up that wing gap, whereas the four millimeter balloon goes pretty close to the end. The lower image there shows a balloon that's too large for that given pleat design, and it's actually extending past the end of the wing gap. And what that can do is it can create a backfold in that section, and if it goes too far past the end of the wing gap, it can actually be pinched by the hard stops between the elements and create um, a pinhole or some damage to the balloon. So when we look at uh, the sizing, if that balloon material is going too long up to the wing gap, what we would typically do is, is go to a higher number of pleats um, so that sh that pleat length is shorter, but then what that might do on your lower end of your um, balloon diameters is create a pleat that's very short, and that can be um, difficult to lie down in the right direction as it's folded uh, repeatedly, and that can lead to a backfold in that, in that smaller pleat. Uh, the other area that we can look at is making the overall wing length longer uh, but typically the design that has to be uh, uh, created there, uh, the angle at which the pleat leaves the root has to become a little bit straighter to allow that length of the, the wing gap to be longer. 
And as you straighten that section out, that uh, shorter pleat in your smaller diameter balloons may not have that, uh, that proper radius or geometry imparted in it. And again, can lead to backfolding or um, bunching of the balloon in, in, uh, in those smaller diameters. So we've talked about closed diameter a little bit on the previous slide. So this is a good example of what we're actually talking about. And it's the, the through hole that is seen as all the elements are closed down. So it's the, the diameter that's tangent to the elements at full closed, that, that red arrow that you see across there. And so as we look at the distal seal or marker band diameter, uh, whichever is greater, we want to make sure that that, that uh, uh, diameter through the, the closed diameter can accommodate those various uh, sizes without uh, pinching. If we um, land that tip of the element into the distal seal because it's too large for the closed diameter, it'll create witness marks or potential damage. And if the marker band plus double wall thickness is our largest diameter and we close down, the marker band um, can be pinched between the, I'm sorry, the balloon material can be pinched between the element tip and the marker band and again, uh, potentially create damage in, in the balloon. So wing gap, another critical parameter for repeatable and uh, optimal performance. Uh, again, this comes from the balloon information sheet, and it's the distance between the two wing areas when the elements are at full close. That small red arrow you see about a third of the way up that uh, left wing gap. And that design uh, parameter is based around the thickness, the double wall thickness of the balloon. Um, and typically what we see is that double wall thickness can be um, the greatest in that taper section of the balloon. So make sure as you're reporting that, uh, that measurement, that you're taking into consideration uh, that taper thickness. So when we design this, we wanna be able to close the pleat head uh, as tightly as we can to that double wall thickness to create a, a very uniform and uh, non-wrinkled pleat. Um, but at the same time, we don't wanna overclose and, uh, and pinch that balloon material. So that concludes uh, a high level look at uh, the process, the equipment, and the uh, pleat head design. Uh, so we'll look to have uh, questions at this point.